with the ultrasound probe, then patient will have pain. And the other thing is where you have refracture, there might be hematoma or subcutaneous emphysema, so the picture might not be clear. So just to go a bit one level up, so uh, you will probably get a better picture cranially. So you count the ribs basically, these are the shadow of the rib, yeah, humped like. So basically there is no hump we can see cranially, so that is your first rib, yes. Then you get a second rib, it will get slowly much more superficially the ribs to be seen as you go da down. That is your third rib and that is your fourth rib. What I do is I keep the fourth rib, I keep that in, in the center, yes, and then turn the probe transversely at that level. So what I am seeing now, can you tell me what you are seeing at the minute, at this level for the minute? You see some wi bright white line there and then that, that hump, that is your transverse process. So that confirms because the rib joins with the transverse process, so that confirms that hump is a transverse process. You can as well do is go more medially, so that shadow is basically of the spinous process and move laterally again by basically keeping it on the rib. So let us keep on the rib only rather than the, so that's the hump is the, your transverse process. Then slide your probe down, now it comes in the visibility is your pleura. You might have to manipulate the basically the probe in a way a bit longitudinally, yes. So you can see above the pleura there is a thin white line that is your intercostal membrane costotransverse ligament. So that is the shadow of the transverse process now. <coughs> if it is you are con getting confused so move it on to the rib again to is it really transverse process? Yes it is transverse process, then slide there. So what you want to is not to see the transverse process ideally because then your needle will not strike the transverse process if you are going from here and keep that shadow on the lateral side of your screen. So you can nicely see is the intercostal membrane, pleura. So that is the area that west shaped space where you have to put your needle in, yes. Maybe if we go down a bit more, it's much better view in this, in him, yeah. You can see everything. Yeah. If you do want to do is basically longitudinally, again the ribs, how to identify which is the rib, uh, which is the transverse process. So ribs will be r rounded structure. If you go medially, it will become more square shaped now. That change in pattern basically <coughs> is your transverse process, yes, much more squarer. In him, ideally I will show you later on, it is better to use, you can see a bit quite, means hazy shadow, isn't it, uh, in him. I best to use is the curvilinear probe in him rather than the, that's what I have started using it, that gives you much better picture. So what you see here is now the transverse process, pleura you can see, yes, and then as we discussed is the costotransverse ligament, yeah, you can see a thin white line again above it, that is your costotransverse ligament, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. and basically you keep the rib away from you now because otherwise you might strike your needle to the rib and you come from bottom or above, whichever. If you are coming from above, then get this out of your way. If you are coming from bottom, get the other rib out of the way, so you do not hit the transverse process. I think it is just practice, whichever technique you want to do, erector spinae or longitudinal, it is more of a practice for any regional ultrasound guided block. Most breast patients are the ideal to start with because they are not big. The trauma patients, generally they are motorcyclists, quite big guys and they have got emphysema, hematoma and all. It is not the right patients to start with. It is the breast patient, breast surgery list or any thoracic, thoracic means cardiothoracic, thoracic wall surgery, pneumonectomy and all. They are the best patient. They are the one who are thin, cancer surgery. 
you will easily see everything, but be aware in that they might have emphysematous bullae. So, do have a look and the scan just to confirm all those things. And when you're putting in your catheters, yes. are you opening, trying to open up the Yes, you have to. We put is between 20 to 30 mils of low color anesthetic first as a bolus to open up the space and then thread the cu most of the time we use is curl catheter, pajang sonar long uh, curl catheters are there, that is the catheter set we use. Sometimes they are quite thin catheters, so sometimes you have to be very careful, they will easily get kinked, they, ha they have not got a metal guide wire inside, it has got is a some elastic type of guide wire in that, we so never cut the those catheters, it has got itself the elastic guide wire inside because otherwise you will get all these coming out like a, the dust particles coming out from that catheter. So, never cut those catheters. Um, they are not MRI friendly. So, you cannot take the patient to MRI. Where I suspect they might have to go for MRI, I will put the normal Pajang Sonolong catheter. They have got is a metal guide wire in that which is removed once you have positioned the catheter. I always do transversely and come from lateral to yeah. medial. That is the normal, but sometimes you might find it difficult view and all. You can try the longitudinal technique in that. How much do you leave in the space? 3 centimeter. Yeah. But the curl catheter, you, do, you do not have to. It, it is, if you see, the, it has got serration. I, I think we should have got the catheter set, is not it? <coughs> anyway, I will go in between when Duncan is doing. You can't really measure how far they are in, they are just. They are, they are all yeah. just curl, it, they have got is a guide at the hub of the needle yes. till that you have to thread, that is yeah. it. I yeah. will get the catheter. Any other question? This is where you tunnel it to. <coughs> tunnel it from lateral, I will come yeah. just to. So this is just, it's just a small amount under the skin, you are not bringing yeah. it round onto the anterior. Area. No, no, I do not tunnel it. Okay. We have got is the glue. The that um, we we use is the glue and this uh, what is that um, fixation and, uh, and <coughs> glue ink bends all around and that okay. what is that fixation device lock it, thing. Lock, it. Yeah. Okay. lock it we use and put all hyperfix all around the locket catheter and dressing as well to secure mm -hmm. it seems to work we used to i use initially used to tunnel still um, there is fallout some of the people are confused they will pull it out whatever you do, <laughs> they pull it out or the nursing care they are turning and all. Even if you tunnel, there is paper to say whether to tun tunnel it or not, it, some have suggested it does not make such a difference. But if you have to keep long term, like we have, we have not many para what it will be do, but for cancer surgery, femoral, um, you know, tumors and all children are there, then I do tunnel because they are kept for a month, they are getting chemotherapy and all they, it is basically kept for a month till they get the surgery done. That I will, uh, do you want them to scan or do you want to talk first? Um.